Okay, CompSci, today we're going to learn about the mystery of for loops in JavaScript. Okay, For loops are a series of instructions that repeat until a condition is met. So we've used our if-else statement, that's a conditional. Okay, we've also used functions where we're working with conditions as well. Um, and now we're going to use something called for loops. Okay, so our fir first we're going we're to click on introduction of for loops in JavaScript. And what we're doing here is essentially giving JavaScript instructions as to where our variable is going to start, okay, how we're going to count that variable, and then where it's going to end. Okay, so let's start with section one. Why use for loops? Okay, we're learning how to program because we do not, we don't want to be boring and have repetitive work. The computer should do that. This first exercise is a good example of exactly why you want to learn for loops. Okay. So use five console log statements to print out the numbers one through five. Okay. Pretty simple. Let's do console.log. Okay. And I'm just going to put the number one. Okay. Semicolon, as we do at the end of all of our console log statements. Okay. Now to make life easier on myself, I'm just going to copy this and then paste it uh, four more times. Okay, because we got to write five total. Paste. Paste. And last one. Okay. But we do have to change the number because we want to print through um, from one through five. So I'm going to put two there. Three. Four. Okay. And five. Okay, well, this is going to make more sense as we go on. Okay, and this is why for loops come in handy, so we don't have to print out um, console log a, a million times. We can use our for loop to print out a series of numbers. Okay, so I hit run, okay, and I'm on to my next section. First for loop. Okay, so here's an example of a for loop right here. Okay, we have, we start our statement with four parentheses. Okay, then we have some we have, where it says var counter equals one. That's called our initial initialization. Okay, it's going to be our variable. That's our starting point in our for loop. Okay, so variable counter equals one. We're going to start at one in this for loop. Okay, our second part. Okay, that's our condition. Okay, counter the variable that we set equal to one. Okay, it has to be less than six. Okay, so it's going to start at one. Okay, it's going to be less than six. Okay, and then we have counter plus plus. Okay, so counter plus plus is um is how we count it. Okay, I know it says counter there, but usually it's, it'll say like a variable plus plus. Okay, so if it has plus plus there, it means we're counting by ones going up. So here we're gonna it should print because we have console log counter. It should print one. Two, three, four, five. Okay, and since it's less than six, it should end there when I hit run. Okay. Let's see if it gives us any instructions to change anything first, though. Okay, the for loop in the code will print out one to five, and use far less code than in used in the previous exercise. Okay. Change the six to an eleven. Okay, so, and then press run. Okay, so we're going to press change the six to an eleven. Okay, now it should print uh, numbers one through ten. Okay, every and and everything under eleven, pretty much. So let's hit run. Okay, cool. See, so it prints one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, very simple. Okay, we don't have to put uh, numbers in console log a bunch of times. We can just put set up our um, for loop, and it counts it for us. Okay, that counter thing. Okay, that allows us to count by ones going up. Okay, sweet. Okay, save it, and then let's go to the next exercise. Okay. Okay, so here, change where the for loop starts. Okay. Okay, so here we're actually using variable i. That's what you, you usually we usually use in our for loops. Okay, it's kind of because we call this the initialization, so we usually use i for our variable. Okay, so here we have variable i equals one. Okay, then i um, is less than 11, so it should print um, the same way. Okay, let's see what our counter looks like. 
or counters i equals i plus 1. Okay, let's see what, what that does for every loop. Okay, using the counter variable. Here our variable is called i, but, I can, but it can have any name. Okay, the variable has many roles. The first part of the for loop tells the computer to start with the value 1 for i. It does by declaring the variable i and gives it a value of 1. When the for loop executes a code, or executes the code in the code block, the bit between the curly brackets, it does not do so. It does it, it does so by starting off where i equals one. Okay, so let's see how it prints with this i equals i plus one here. Wait, change the loop. So okay, we're gonna start off at five. So we're gonna change where our loop starts this time. We started at one last time. We're gonna change it to five. Okay, cool. So it prints from 5 through 10. Okay, this is just um, a little bit longer way to put I++. Okay, all that means is we're counting up by 1. Make sure we save. Okay, okay now we're going to edit this loop. Okay, we know how to control where the loop starts. How do we control where it ends? Okay, that's what um, we did in that first part. We changed the 11. Okay, so here we know the loop will keep running until i equals 10, like it did last time, okay, because we have the i is less than 11, okay. Change the loop so that it starts at 4. Okay. Change our initialization to 4. Remember, the stuff in bold is what it actually wants us to do up here in the code. Okay, and then change the for loop so that it counts up to and including 23. Okay, so now we could put, we do not want it, want it to print out 24. Okay, so we could put, see if we put 24 in there, okay, if that works. Okay, that does work. We could also put in there, okay, okay i is less than or equal to 23 and it will give us the same number. Excellent, see? Okay, print it out twice. Either or is fine. Okay, pretty simple stuff. Okay, last part. Okay, we can now control where the for loop starts and ends, but what about controlling what happens in between, how we're counting it? Okay, so we use the uh, i equals i plus 1. Okay. And like I said, that means exactly the same thing as I++. It's going to count up our variable by 1 each time it counts. Okay? That's all. That's all. Pretty simple stuff. Okay? Now, if we have this I minus minus, okay, all that means it's going to count down by 1 from the start. Okay? We haven't used that one yet. I minus minus. We could, now, we could, we, could we could switch the count by any way we want as long as we put... Um, I plus equals and how much we want it up to count up by. Okay, so for example, okay, if we put I plus equals three, okay, it would count up by threes here. So we'd start, it would start with zero. In this case, we if we ran it with I plus three, let's see what it does. Let's see if it runs for us. Okay, well, print it, it, it did, it printed out that it didn't work, but it wants us to do something else. But see, zero, three, six, 9, 12, 15. It's counting up by threes going upward. Okay, let's put the minus one in there. Minus, minus. Okay. Let's set that up higher than 36. Okay, that was going to print an error. We'll just leave that go. All right, let's switch that back. Okay, now, let's see what it actually wants us to do. Okay, this code counts every number from 0 to 35. Okay, make it start counting from 5. Okay, so we're going to start that at 5. Okay, stop the counting when it prints out 50. Okay, so again, we could put 51 in there. I is less than 51. We could also put I is less than or equal to 50. I'm going to go with that. Okay. Only count every fifth number. Okay, so okay, we want to count up by fives. So I'm going to do i plus equals five. So it counts by fives. 
Awesome. Okay, very good. As you can see here. Okay. You can see it prints up by five there. Very nice. Very good stuff. Save, run. Okay, cool. Okay, that part is done. We want to go to the next section now. Okay, so that's our basics with our for loops. Again, we have our initialization where our for loop is going to start. Okay. We have where it's going to count up to or end. Okay. And then we have by which it's by how much it's counting by. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, so here, okay, if I ran it, it would count by one going up until number 12. Okay, so I hope we learned a little bit about for loops. Okay, let's try to finish the rest of the section on our own. Best of luck. I don't think you need it. For loops, for loops I think they're a little easier than, our, than what we did with functions. Okay, so basic structure we have. I'm going to pull my glossary up. We'll show it again. Ah, there we go. Okay, we have initialization, start, condition, okay, or where our expression is going to loop until, and then we actually call the, the, the technical term for that is increment, how much we're counting up by or counting down by. Okay, inside here is our code, is our statements, whatever we put it in there, console log, maybe we just want to, we just want to print out the variable, okay, maybe we want to print out the variable plus something. Okay, that's up to that's up to it's up to you depending on the, the exercise, but um, I think we should do all right. So best of luck. Let's finish that section, and then we should have no problem working on the project section.